Should I play video games or draw? Oh, look, it's a reflection. It's almost like a projection of me. How would I draw that? In this video, I want to bring together the topics that we talked about in the previous how-to videos, but I also want to touch upon something that I mentioned in one of my live streams, namely projection and also symmetry. For both projection and symmetry, a coordinate system can be very helpful. And for me, the box is the perfect coordinate system. We talked a lot about boxes. We know how to draw them, duplicate them and how to measure with them. But boxes also consist of rectangles, which means that I use the edges of the box like the three axes of directions in a coordinate system and I make sure to relate everything in my drawings to these lines. Now, let's talk about projection and for that let's start with the projection of a point. From the point I draw the projection onto the plane of my choice, this is nothing more than a perpendicular line. From the projected point I draw a perpendicular line onto the second plane. From that point I draw a parallel line with the edges. Next I draw another parallel line from my original point with, uh, with the perpendicular line I drew from my projected point onto the second plane. And where these intersect we have our second projection of the point. For the symmetry we construct a duplicate of our box, see previous video how to do this, and extend the projection lines over into the newly created box. I estimated the distances here but you can construct the precise length by using the methods from the previous video. Next, let's look at doing the projections of a line. What we have to do is basically doing the point projections twice, since every line is composed of at least two points. Just like before, I project the point onto the bottom plane. From there, with construction lines, I create the projection of the left side plane. And I repeat this for the second point of the line as well. We can do all of these for the third plane as well, thus having all three projections of the line. Once I'm done with all the projections, I can choose one of the planes as the symmetry plane and duplicate the box onto that side. And just as before, by prolonging the projection lines into the new box, keeping foreshortening in mind, in perspective, we can create the line on the other side. Alright, let's do the same exercise again, but this time we will be drawing a plane. We will project all of the edge points of the plane onto the bottom plane. Connecting these points, we will be getting our projection on that plane. From here on, we will be doing the same as before, only four times per plane. The tricky part is the first projection, since you do have to have a bit of feeling how our original plane is hanging in the air. Keep in mind, the plane that we have in the air can be parallel to either of the construction planes, tilted on either of its four edges or tilted along one of its diagonals and other ways as well. So you will have to guesstimate with the first projection on the bottom plane, but this video is for people who already have a relatively good grasp on perspective and that will help you see if your first projection is off or not.
Let us do the symmetrical counterpart of this plane as well. Just like before, we prolong each projection line in perspective to get the projection points. Something I like to do for assurance is to do the perpendicular lines from the bottom projection onto the symmetry plane. This way I can check if my symmetrical projection is correct or not. Let me show you how this works in practice. I draw a box and within the box I create my symmetry plane. And from there on out I try to measure everything to the symmetry plane to keep things in check. Things like the tilted armor plates at the front of the plane are quite hard to guesstimate correctly when you are drawing in perspective. And setting up a symmetry system within a box or coordinate system can help you a lot in keeping the proportions correct. But symmetry and projection also helps with setting up elements of the ship that are in the middle like the front cylinder and the cockpit. They are easier to place because I know how to place them correctly. Pay special attention to how I set up the tilted tail wings and how I project the points from one side to the other, replicating the correct tilt in perspective. Because I'm drawing digitally, I also have the luxury of working with layers, so when I get to a point where I can't guesstimate how to draw the wings, I just go back to my construction line and make sure to take the time and construct the left side wing correctly. It is always good to have construction lines to fall back on when you are lost in a drawing. But with that, we have come to the end of this little video. This was the last educational video for this year. Since holidays are coming up and I might or might not have to do some traveling, I will probably drop shorter, more process style videos. Which is good for you because instead of learning new stuff, you can exercise all the things we went over in the last couple of videos. So I do hope you liked this video, hit that like button if you did and subscribe if you would like to see more content like this. Don't forget to leave a comment if you have any questions or join our Discord channel, link in the description down below. There you can also find links to my masterclass and Gumroad if you want to support me. But as always, most important thing is that you guys have a great time and see you in the next video. Bye bye!